Welcome back. So we're going to make a real customer's controller later on, but right now I want to show you guys something pretty amazing. And that is how fast we can actually convert this values controller into actually start returning customers instead. So first of all, let's just rename this guy, refactor, rename. And let's just call this the customer's controller instead of the values controller, just to kind of give you guys an example. There we go. Now it's a customer's controller. And by making this into a customer's controller, every place that I kind of call now has to be instead of values, it has to be customers, right? Now it's just as easy to just create this from scratch and I'll show you that in a later lesson. But I just want to show you guys how fast we can actually go from values controller into actually getting some real data from our data set up. So now we have this guy available. What we're going to do next is we're going to actually create a constructor for this guy. So if you guys remember, I need to dependency inject to start using my customer service. I need to dependency inject it, right? So I'll just do a customer's controller right here. And there I want to dependency inject um, my service, right? The customer service that we used in the application. So I'm trying to kind of duplicate what I did inside the program right here, the printer, right? The old console app. I had this customer service right here and I dependency injected it just like I'm doing right here. But to do that, you of course need the references. So let me right click and add dependencies inside the REST API. I need the core, I need the entities, and I need the infrastructure project to kind of do this. So let me just add all of those. Now the dependencies are there on the projects, right? Now they are available. And the next thing I need to do is kind of inside the controller, I just need to add my customer service so I can start getting uh, customers, right? And that's pretty amazing. So what do I do next? Well, I also want to kind of make a local variable for this. Let's just do it like this. It's new customer service. And let's just make that local variable. There we go. And we can even make it uh, read only. So let's just do that. Uh, private read only Re read only. There we go. So now we have a customer service available and we can actually start using it within our code. So check this out. What I want to do is instead of returning with my get that I just showed you guys, I just return a dumb list of strings. I'm going to return actual customers now. So I'm already starting to get real data from my actual data set or my fake database right now. But still check this out. Oof, customer service, get all customers, done. Right. So I had to change that instead of returning simple strings right here, that's what I said before, I want to return customers, right? I'm also explaining that it's going to be an enumerable, you guys remember that guy, it's a list of a kind, right? But it's going to be enumerable, that's what I'm going to return to you. And this is where I'm going to get all the customers from. And then this guy is going to take care of the rest of it for me, right? Let's try and do one more thing because this is not enough, you know, with the program, we had to set something up to actually work with dependency injection, right? So let's do that as well. Jump back to the program. What do we do? Well, we set some kind of service at scope stuff right here. We're going to do the same in our program now. But the cool thing is with the REST API, we have something in startup CS file. They actually predefined because they know people need to dependency in inject stuff. So here at line 19 ish, you have something called configure services. And there I can actually go and do my dependency injection by actually saying services add scoped, just like we did before. And then I'll just import the missing references. And guess you me, I just dependency inject the customer repository in the customer service. Ta da! So this should actually be running now. Let's try and start this up. Now I know this was a very quick introduction. We'll dive more into it later. But I just want to show you guys how easy it is to actually start using our clean architecture that we built earlier. So let's just go back to the local host and say slash not values anymore, but slash customers because we changed that and hopefully we're getting back a couple of customers. There we go. That's all we had to do. We're getting customers back. You said, what, what now? Yeah, that's all I had to do. Freaking awesome. Sweet. So let's try and jump into the actual request. So here's the request that I called, right? I'm calling API customers. I'm calling with a get request, which then I expect to get a list of customers back and I'm getting a list of customers back. So if I go to the response, you'll notice here's some JSON. This is what JSON looks like. We have an array of customers. That's kind of the square brackets right here. And then you have the first object, comma, the second object. Don't worry, we'll work a lot more with JSON. I'll show you this raw right here if you want to as well. This is just a helper class I have. But you guys can go and read a lot more about JSON. What if you wanted to get a customer by ID? Well, we're not going to do that this lesson, but I will show you soon. So don't worry, we'll start actually expanding this and we'll start just in the controller, we'll start adding the other areas using the customer service that we already created because we have all the functionality available. We just need to open it up. 
So there's one thing you might not get any customers. That's actually because you can go and check out the code where I made the customer infrastructure static data right here. I actually made a fake database that's static. That's why I get some customer back. And inside my customer repository, I kind of said, when you launch the repository, if you have no, no customers in your database at all, create three customers, uh, two customers right here. And that's why I have some customers. So you can go and check those two classes if you don't get any customers. That's it for this lesson. Did you guys notice that? I don't know how long this was. I'll check out the video afterwards. But I went from no information at all in a REST API using my service and using my um, beautiful controller. And I was up and running and could return customers within minutes. That's how powerful this is. See you next time. Have fun.